Gemini, welcome to your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries Tarot. My name is Michelle. Welcome to my tarot table. For those of you returning, God bless. And thank you so much for all the help and support. Gemini, you always make me smile. And this week, well, what can I say about this week? We're gonna go over the astrology and then we're gonna get into the general tarot card reading. Remember, there's always an extended tarot card reading and the links for that are down below. I'll attach it to the top of the end of the video so you can just click right on it and go right there. I'll also pin it to the top of the comment section. You'll find it, trust me, for a deeper dive into the message that's revealed now here in this video. This is your message. So you let whatever energies I describe resonate to you the way they resonate in your life. And remember, there could be another video like your rising sign video or your moon sign video that you resonate more with this week or maybe even this year. So they're there for you. 12 videos every single week for each zodiac sign. Um, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you love my videos so that you know when I upload your favorite content. I also have a second YouTube channel. It's called Astrology Motivation. And if you find me there, you can chat with me live every single weekday as I do a general tarot card re reading and I go over the astrology for the day and I do a weekly astrology forecast. So, you ready? This is an active week for Mercury. Mercury is in retrograde and it is in full effect. If you can see, if you live in the US, you know that there was a huge shutdown with the airlines. So communication, travel, went kaput. It was an overload, especially concerning things that people consider luxury. They consider to be treated well when they fly, right? They, they consider, they think that everything is going to go well. They're trying to enjoy themselves, enjoy the holiday, and then bam, technical issues, weather issues, and everybody's stuck at airports for days, and flights are delayed for days, and that was in the shadow period of Mercury. So the shadow period is usually the most skunky, the time leading up to, and what could surprise you is the time leading out of Mercury retrograde. But by the end of January, we, we will be done with this. We'll be done with this energy and we'll be done with another very significant energy that's impacting Mercury retrograde right now, which is Mars retrograde. Mercury retrograde and Mars retrograde are says a square, says I quite quadrate, um, but basically it means it's an irritation, it's a, it's a tough mix. What does that translate to? Since Mars is in Gemini, which is your natural first house, it doesn't mean it's your natal first house. If you want a full rundown of your natal chart, I can definitely do that for you. I, I do personal readings. Uh, check out my website. You can book and schedule there, or you can run a free natal chart for yourself on Google and go through it and start to learn some astrology as you do. But what you'll see is that it means that there's that that Mars is in your natural first house, which is it's in Gemini. So it's all about taking action, action through communication, right? Talking, speaking to each other. And now that it is in a challenging relationship with your ruling dignitary, there is major irritation for you. So I wouldn't be surprised if this whole week because the the says a square lasts this whole week. It's just irritating for you. Irritating that you pop off a lot, you get agitated, probably because people have misinterpreted you or you've misinterpreted them. You know, you're so witty, you're so quick, you're so fast with your mind, but when Mercury is in retrograde, you're, you'll start to stumble. And so you're used to being able to, when you're used to being able to move a mile a minute and all of a sudden you can't, um, there's a lot of frustration there. So definitely expect that and expect that there will be these angry conversations, like angry, frustrated, and people looking back into the past, maybe throwing up a lot of the past into your face, especially for actions that you didn't take or actions that you did in the past. And it's like, it, it, could, be a, it, could, be a, it could be a challenge as in it could be a headache, flat out, straight up. Um, we also have... Uh, a conjunction to Venus in the beginning of the week, but as Mercury goes further into retrograde, Venus and Mercury will finally start to pull apart from each other. So at least this isn't, there isn't this extra added pressure of, 
you know, Venus making you feel bigger, more expansive, more glamorous. It's almost, that that's good most times, but in this situation, it could be even more frustrating because then it's like there's dissonance between your expectations and, and all the frustration and what's really going on. It'll, the separation will help you actually feel more real and be able to focus a lot more. By the end of the week, focus will be easier for you because there is a beautiful and helpful trine to Uranus, which is going to help you your cleverness sort of come back online. It'll support your cleverness a little bit, um, especially in terms of putting together things, strategizing things, thinking things, or being creative with your thoughts. There's also a supportive sextile between Mercury and Neptune this whole week, and we've talked about it because I know we talked about it last week. Um, it's a very psychic energy. So pay attention to your dreams. This. Mercury retrograde is never a good time for you guys to take action, but it is a great time for you to discover or rediscover things you could have missed, things you could have looked over. So by the end of the week, this could be excellent, excellent input and information that you need to actually solve problems that you may have missed and been moving too fast for. So that could be a little bit of a blessing of this retrograde coming to you by the time that trying to Uranus forms later on in this week. That would be that would be after Wednesday. Um, I did make a note that Friday could be a particularly emotional day for you because that's when the moon moves into Aries. It's riding uh, Jupiter, it's riding Chiron, and it is square to Mercury. So um, fire's high, energy's high, but also hurt is high. You know, remembering things that people have said to you or people throwing them back up to you, things you've said to them. This is high. It could even be since Mercury is in Capricorn. Oh, oh contracts, what you owed me or paperwork uh, that people are bringing back up to you that you, you'd forgotten about. So yes, more frustration and more tension, but that's also designed to help you release obligation and uh, kind of confront what needs to be confronted so that it doesn't ever have to impact you again. So this is a very active week. And I think overall it can be very frustrating astrologically for you. Like I said, if you want a full rundown of exactly how this energy is going to be impacting you, then I would have to do a synastry chart between today's chart and your natal chart. And you could definitely book that with me. But ultimately, let's get into the cards because you may not even need them. <laughs> uh, we have the Queen of Cups and we have the Seven of Cups. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. Uh, what does that mean? Your heart's all there, but your mind isn't. It's hard for you to make up your mind. It's almost like you're falling in love with everything and you don't know how to make a decision. Like, which is the thing that I want the most? We have a full moon and a new moon here, which I take as a timeline. There's going to be a full moon coming in the next in the next week and a half because we just had a new moon over this weekend. So we're going into the next weekend. So about a week and a half, we're gonna have a full moon in Cancer. How appropriate since we do have a water moon. And there she is just being unconditionally loving, free flowing, unconditional love. But then we also have by the next new moon, this is confusing things. It's almost like we loving too many people or we're loving too much or um, we're, we love so much, we're excited about so much, we're enthusiastic about so much. But then it, it's like, okay, but what do I choose? Okay, but at the same time, like I said, during a Mercury retrograde, this isn't the best time to choose. So maybe it is just an exploratory time and this energy won't be so frustrating as long as you don't expect that an outcome will come of it and you just allow it to be what it is, which is a great time to sort of window shop browse and explore. This could definitely mean dating multiple people, um, not wanting to decide, or getting a little bit distracted, um, getting a little bit distracted by overwhelming emotion, which we're gonna get further into. Let's keep digging. Gemini, Gemini. Remember, this message comes to you exactly when it's supposed to come to you guys exactly when it's supposed to come to you. We have a little bit of wonkiness in patience because we have temperance sort of in reverse and there's a sense of not being able to make things work or make things make sense. 
and this is kind of going into the future. So definitely expect that this Mercury retrograde is going to be impacting you. Blame it on the retrograde, dude, definitely. Uh, it could also mean that you feel stuck, that you can't travel or you can't get out or you can't get around or <clears throat> that communications, especially with people that are long distance with you, it's not going through. It's not working out. Expect that. You could be some confusion as to, you know, does this person still feel something for me because I can't get through to them. I can't reach them. I can't, I can't contact them or... Um, we haven't been seeing eye to eye or it's like we're talking two different languages and that's going to continue through the end of this week according to the cards and then we have the five of wands which is contention arguments um people having different perspectives different points of view or red tape being thrown up into your face it's like every time you try to move forward there's somebody else coming at you like da -da 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 -da. but you said this but you said this i need this i need this oh you can't do this it could be criticism of some sort. Um, really interesting. Um, let's get a moon card and then let's dig into how you can work with this energy. We're also going to dig into this five of swords a little bit more. I wanna be more specific. We had hold your vision. So something's getting in the way. Something's definitely getting in the way of your confidence and how you feel, how, how you feel, I mean, how you're being treated. It's how you're being treated that's getting in the way of how you're feeling about things. So why am I explaining this to you? So that you can expect this energy and know that this is a training tool that the universe is putting you through. And if you're aware of it, maybe you can navigate it a little bit better. And we're gonna go into that navigation right now. Hold your vision. Um, it's been difficult for you. It's distracting. So somebody's getting in the way of your plans. It's somebody's getting in the way. It could be somebody's emotions, but it's interesting because the cards are implying that they are confused emotions, that people are reacting. Let me tell you something. People are, if people are reacting emotionally, you are never going to be able to have a conversation with them. Um, I heard this. This is a very important thing. Remember, you cannot have an intelligent conversation with an emotional person. It's not gonna work. Um, and that's sort of what the cards are saying. But the frustrating thing is it's getting in the way of something that you have been trying to do and work on and get together. And they're, or they could be even manipulating this and holding it over your head so that they get the emotional attention that you, that they think that they, that they think they deserve from you. Right, so so this is this is a big old red flag for the week. You're going to be dealing with a lot of emotional people. You could be getting, and this will get you emotional. This will make you reactionary as well because somebody is definitely picking up your plans. It's 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 difficult um, for you to proceed or even believe that you can <clears throat> continue and fulfill um, what you've wanted to get done. Right. How does Gemini deal with this? How do you want Gemini to deal with this? Six of Cups. <laughs> Get lost in love, bitch. Yes. Look at, look at. Or it says go home. Go to a place where it's comfortable. Or remember, and since Mercury is in retrograde, this will be easy. One of the, the tools in your wheel, in your shed this week that you should take out and use is to remember how much you love someone or something. Remember the good times. It'll be easy for you because Mercury is in retrograde. So even though a lot of shit may come up from the past, a lot of memories will come up from the past too. And a lot of those memories will be of the good times and in looking back since it is a retrograde could help you remember and stay focused on why you started and why it matters to you to begin with because this is where the past helps us right you know i mean air signs you guys are always focused on the now that's your ruling zone and that's why you make so much fucking sense and get so much done and it's a gift i tell you you don't want to be one of us water signs who's always looking in the past. But sometimes the past can help to liberate you. Liberate you from the stress of this moment if you remember why it matters to you and why you care. It also says remember your roots, remember where you came from. For some of you, it might be good to go home, visit home, and reconnect with family and friends that are not part of your clusterfuck at this moment, but instead can help 
relieve the stress and just bring you joy. This is also a sentiment since Mercury does start out conjunct to Venus and also sextile to uh, Neptune, which is very romantic and is very dreamy. Um, it is also very powerful because it means that you will be able to make sense of what doesn't make any sense. And that is extremely powerful for creativity, for writing, for, um, for strategizing and conceptualizing. So this is a great time to put pen to paper and start your novel or, you know, or or your poetry. It's it's a fantastic time to like take all this craziness and turn it into something that becomes palatable that you can eventually share with people. It will be very appreciated and probably very successful. That's another thing you can do with this energy this week. But six of cups implies there could be somebody from the past bitch there's a mercury retrograde hello you know the motherfuckers are gonna start calling and they are they're gonna they're gonna start calling this is ring a ling a ling oh, i haven't talked to you in a long time what's up oh my god have you been thinking about me you know this expect that like just expect that it may even be coming from you you may actually even be the one doing it leave the comments below go ahead let me know how this is playing out it doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, it could be, because I was asking the cards for what should Gemini do about it, it could be a distraction from all the craziness that you're dealing with right now. It's also saying that you will be more inclined to want to get back with somebody old or somebody that is comfortable because of all this craziness around you right now. It doesn't mean it's gonna last, but it does mean that you will be inclined to be more nostalgic it could also mean that you are remembering the past better than it ever was because the future or right now is so crazy so fyi be aware of that um we also have ten of wands there's some sort of burdens or a lot of shit that you're dealing with right now and i think this is like biting you know you, you biting more than you but bit more than you could chew oh god completely forgot what the hell is happening yeah it's like you took on too much too to you have so much passion right um and this could really kind of like be the straw that breaks the camel's back you know a sense of oh god it, in other words it may feel like a release at first but it's just gonna bring you drama judgment is here so there's there's a lot of judgment here there's actually a judge. Are you dealing with like legal shit or something like that? Because this is definitely a sense of, um, oh, that's why this is happening. So you could finally see clearly about a situation that confused you and that you never got real answers with. There was a lot of contention in this situation. And so now you can finally see clear. See all these squares and all this tension and all this craziness. It feels like a curse. It's not. It's actually a blessing. What this week is going to give to you is clarification so that you, because this is you, man. This is you. This is the king of swords, can finally make a decision clear cut based on the facts based on what really went on and how things really were. But it's like all this shit's got to come up for you to be able to see that and take that into account. But it will help you finally, by the end of this week, be able to make a decision that makes sense. It just won't happen as fast as it normally, it normally does. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles. So this is slow. That's what it is. Things moved really slow. And it is frustrating, um, but it is retrograde. So please don't push yourself. If you try to push yourself, this is when you're gonna cause yourself even more damage and more frustration and more problems. Retrogrades are a time for you when your ruling dignitary is in retrograde to kick back. I know that everybody can't take a break for three weeks. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Um, but don't stress yourself out on trying to move things forward, this is a time of retrospection to make things more clear. And the blessing right here is that there is going to be clarity on something that you needed to slow down in order to see it clearly. We're gonna get a little deeper into what that is, but first let me answer my question. I promised I'd answer it for you. Five of Wands, what is that? What is this Five of Wands, please? 
Oh, it's coming through the internet. Page of Swords. There's a lot of chitter chatter. There's a lot of emails. There's a lot of there's a lot of little petty shit that you're dealing with that doesn't mean much by itself, but the fact that it's coming at you, it, it like it's coming at you so frequently and so much. It's the volume that is hard, that is difficult. It could also mean criticism for a new idea that you had. And it's like, don't introduce your idea when it's still in infancy. Keep it to yourself. It'll make that clear to you. It'll make you realize, you know what? I just gotta shut up and do this stuff on my own so that it has time to grow and develop and uh, people don't get in my way before it's mature enough to hold up to criticism or, or to be seen. And then we have the Knight of Wands saying there will be action taken to move forward or it'll help you realize that you have to move forward in the darkness or in, not secret, but basically go it yourself. The Hermit is about have faith and don't have to tell everybody along the way what you are doing. You're going to find that there is a deeper conviction that you have, but you're going to you're gonna not you're not gonna make such a show of it. You're not gonna make such a spectacle of it because honestly, people are gonna really be frying your brain this week. Let's get into how this energy impacts all the different aspects of your week, of your life, how it's going to look for your career, your love life, your finances, your family and friends. I will see you guys in the extended. Link is below.